It's Thursday, January 9. This is the news on PBCJ. I am Simone Absalom. Successive governments in Jamaica have used extrajudicial and illegal methods to fight crime. This admission came from Prime Minister Andrew Holness as he addressed the 15th annual National Gathering of Heal the Family, Heal the Nation at the National Arena on Wednesday. Mr. Holness gave an optimistic address touting that 2020 will be a good year for the country. However, with Jamaica's murder rate remaining eight times the global average, the Prime Minister stomped on crime fighting as he addressed the Christian audience. He said that a new age of crime fighting is dawning in the country. There's a sense in the public, even though I just preached about that, but there's a sense in the public that our police force should go hard on the criminals, that someone should get take out. There is a sense, I mean, I've, I've gone to receptions and people there see me and say, being too tough, that we need a particular kind of policing. But I want to say to you, particularly the church, that Jamaica cannot go back down that road. No. We can't go back to the point where we have very high police killings. We are going to fight crime using the law. Because the truth is, we have been fighting crime using the other methods. <coughs> Extrajudicial and illegal. For many years, here we are. So let's use the law. If it means we have to strengthen the law, if it means we have to bring in more technology, and it definitely means that we have to bring in the public, you, into the crime fighting solution. Opposition leader Dr. Peter Phillips also shared the stage and the Prime Minister asked his counterpart to join him in a show of commitment to work together in an unrelenting fight against crime and violence in the country. I invite the leader of the opposition to join me in a symbolic handshake for the peace of the nation. Honest says the Peace Management Initiative, PMI, is to be repurposed. On Wednesday, Mr. Holness received church leaders in a courtesy call for a national leadership prayer breakfast. One of the main topics was the PMI. Mr. Holness gave the assurance that the government was not abandoning support for the initiative. However, he intimated that it could be retooled. It has evolved since to involve uh, other aspects of intervention, including resources. Um, so the question is how effective has it been? What can be done to make it more effective? Because in managing crime and conversely managing peace, you have to place all the tools in the toolbox on the table. All of them have to be brought together. So the, the PMI is a tool, and we have to sharpen it. Uh, and sometimes we purpose it because the game has changed in, in many regards and many respects. So that's, that's what it is. There's no, no attempt to do away with it. 
Mr. Holness said, however, that the PMI is integral to the country's overall security apparatus since it can influence change at the community level. So part of that safety and security is how do we keep our community peaceful, local communities peaceful. And leaders have a very important role in promoting peace, um, quite apart from the role that you know, the state has, for example, in securing the borders, securing the ports, mobilizing the police, equipping them, mobilizing the army and equipping them, putting in place the national intelligence architecture, putting in place the systems to receive information. All of those things the state has a responsibility to do, but so too our church leaders, our religious leaders, they have a duty and a responsibility to promote peace as a personal responsibility and a civic duty of every single Jamaican. The PMI is a non-governmental group, though they are financed mainly by the government of Jamaica. They have a very close working relationship with the Ministry of National Security, to which they are accountable and report on a monthly basis. Jamaica will be targeting tourism markets, new tourism markets, for 2020. That's the word from Director of Tourism Donovan White. Mr. White told JIS News that focus will be placed on the Asian markets, notably India, Japan and China. Mr. White said that connectivity will also be very important, noting that Jamaica has been having an excellent run with some of the major airlines in the world. The tourism director further informed that focus will be placed on cruise shipping, while adding that Jamaica stands ready to welcome the world's largest cruise ship, the Symphony of the Seas, in May. Meanwhile, Jamaica's visibility in the tourism market is said to be further boosted by the release of the new James Bond movie No Time to Die in theaters worldwide in April. Parts of the movie were filmed in Port Antonio, Portland. Also, celebrations commemorating the 75th birthday of the reggae superstar Bob Marley will be another visibility booster for the country. Community disaster plans are being prepared for several flood-prone areas in Savannah Lamar. Uh, that said by the coordinator for disaster preparedness in Westmoreland, Hilma Tate. She says the plans are being drafted out of a need to improve disaster risk management in the town, particularly at Hudson Street, Cook Street and Landilo. Ms. Tate says plans will outline the history of the areas as well as the resources needed at the community level to ensure quick response in the event of flooding, fire, earthquake, hurricane and more. Ms. Tate noted that the parish has a disaster plan which is revised yearly and the contact list for the parish is regularly updated. She said that the parish and community disaster plan seek to ensure that individuals are aware of the course of action to be taken during a, a catastrophe. The People's National Party PMP has already identified 56 of the 63 candidates it expects to contest the next election as the party steps up its preparations for the polls. PMP General Secretary Julian Robinson yesterday confirmed that the party has called its potential candidates and campaign managers to a two-day retreat this weekend. During the retreat to be held at an undisclosed location, the PMP members are scheduled to discuss organizing, communication, messaging, enumeration, campaign financing and fundraising. It is expected that the PMP will go to the polls with more than 20 candidates including several high profile persons who will be contesting a general election for the first time. Marketing Petroleum Company, uh, Rubis Energy Jamaica, will be served with an enforcement notice from the National Environment and Planning Agency, NEPA. This follows a report from Rubis Energy Jamaica of a 
pollution incident, which it said happened at the company's Rockford facility in East Kingston on Tuesday. Senior Manager for the Environmental Management Subdivision at NEPA, Richard Nelson, told the press that the incident involved fractures to two pipelines resulting in petroleum products seeping into a drain and getting into the marine environment. He said NEPA's technical team had investigated the incident and confirmed that Rubis has deployed a containment boom to prevent the chemicals, 87 gasoline and toluene, from spreading, after which some steps are to be taken to recover these substances. Nelson said NEPA has also deployed its own team to investigate the incident. And motorists should see a decrease at the pumps in the prices of gasoline and an increase in the price of diesel effective Thursday, January 9. That's according to the latest ex refinery costs from Petrogem. 87 and 90 octane gasoline will be sold for $124.21 and $127.05 dollars 5 per liter, respectively down by $3.06 each. Automotive diesel fuel will be sold for $134.43 per liter, following an increase of 25 cents, while ultra-low sulfur is down by $1 and will be sold for $137.41 per liter. Meanwhile, kerosene decreased in price by $3 and will be sold for $110.68 per liter. Propane liquid petroleum will be sold for $34.50 per liter, down by 27 cents. And butane liquid petroleum will be sold for $43.73 per liter after an increase of 39 cents. Do remember, marketing companies and retailers will add their respective markup to these prices. The U.S. dollar is being traded at $134.13, up by $0.32. Cents. That's according to the Bank of Jamaica's daily exchange trading summary. The Canadian dollar is being traded at $104.29, up from $100.95, while the British pound sterling is being traded at $173.45, up from $170.15. Time now for the Living Healthy Report. Cardiopulmonary resuscitation, CPR, involves basic maneuvers that can give someone a chance of surviving until advanced care presents itself. Breathing and pulse are the two key factors in determining if someone needs CPR or not. Here are a few warning signs that CPR might be needed. Sudden collapse, check for breathing and a pulse. Unconsciousness, try to wake the person. If unsuccessful, check for breathing and a pulse. Breathing problems. No breathing or limited breathing may call for CPR. No pulse. If a pulse can't be felt, the heart may have stopped. Drowning. Drugs. Exposure to smoke and inhalants. Check for breathing and a pulse. Injuries of this nature might call for a combination of rescue breathing and chest compressions. So what is the first thing to do before administering CPR? Okay. Are you okay? Are you okay? Shout out. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, what do you want? What do you want, ladies and gentlemen? Ambulance. If there is no response, then look for signs of life by checking for breathing and a pulse. In the absence of signs of life, persons must always call for help. Either breaths or chest compressions must be administered, but the main focus of CPR should be sustained chest compressions. This is in keeping with the 2008 training manuals of the American Heart Association, 
which indicated that in cases where persons are unwilling or unable to do mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, chest compressions alone can save a life. So it's normal 30 compressions, two breaths for five cycles, but for now doing compressions only. So we're doing 30 compressions together, they will pause, they will continue. I'll do that five times. If you don't get it right, do more for punishment. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Count aloud together after two. One, two, let's go. One, two, three, four, Count aloud, guys. Seven, eight, nine, ten. They should then compress the chest 30 times at a rate of 100 to 120 times per minute. Then give a breath. If no breath is being given, the compressions must be sustained for the entire time. That's the C. These three fingers, these three fingers form the E. There's an E C technique, right? Over the nose and the mouth. Help till chin lift and blow. One. Two. Do not touch the patient. Two breaths. Last call. The next step is the use of the automated external defibrillator, the AED, after which advanced care should be administered by the first responding health professional, such as an emergency medical technician, an EMT. The Heart Foundation offers training in CPR for individuals, family units and companies. Health Education Officer at the Heart Foundation, Alonzo Mothersil, tells us more. Well, certificate is really for your own personal development. You contribute to many things happen at home. That's why it's called family and friends CPR. So it's not really per, for job workers and per se, but for you to know what to do in case of emergency. Like the, the regular BLS course, the medical persons, those are offered three times per month. Also, our first aid class, and we have one that's offered once per month. But for a company, a group of persons, or a school who wants a training, they can give us a call, they can get any training at any day they want. Well, I decided to participate in the course because I thought it was important for persons to, well, for me, to be equipped, you know, possibly save somebody's life or even a family member of my life. So that's the main reason why I decided to participate in the course. Uh, professional development is key. And so having uh, to receive trainings like these, it allows you to, uh, well, work with you a lot so it allows us to empower them in those same regard as well and for my own personal development i'm thinking who wouldn't want to save a life if the opportunity arises you can get more information on cpr and the training sessions and cost on the heart foundation's website at www.heartfoundationja.org In regional news, an earthquake with a magnitude of 5.2 rocked several Caribbean islands on Wednesday as regional countries were being urged to continue monitoring the situation in Puerto Rico where two strong earthquakes have been blamed for the death of one man and damage to several buildings in that country. The Trinidad-based Seismic Research Center of the University of the West Indies said that the quake occurred at 10.01 local time and was located at 15.18 degrees north, longitude 61.22 degrees west, and at a depth of 123 kilometers. The SRC said that the quake was felt 23 kilometers southeast of Rousseau in Dominica, as well as 66 kilometers north, northwest of Fort de France, the capital of the French island of Martinique, and 124 kilometers south, southeast of Pointe de Pit, the capital of Guadeloupe. The SRC said there were no immediate reports of injuries or damage and the Barbados-based Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency Wednesday joined SRC in urging the Caribbean countries to monitor the situation in Puerto Rico.
The U.S. Geological Survey said the quake also affected several other countries, including the Bahamas, British Virgin Islands, Dominican Republic, Dominica, St. Martin, St. Martin, Guadeloupe, Haiti, Montserrat, Puerto Rico, St. Kitts and Nevis, Turks and Caicos Islands, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. In sports, we roll off with cricket. The Jamaica Scorpions will begin a new regional four-day era with a new coach and a new captain when they kick off their West Indies Championship campaign Thursday against Trinidad and Tobago Red Force at the Brian Lara Cricket Academy in Taruba. The Andre Coley coached and John Campbell-led team will have a tricky first round away tie to a TNT side that is oozing with confidence following the appointment of West Indies batsman Darren Bravo as captain. And the West Indies left-hander Darren Bravo will lead the Trinidad and Tobago Red Force in their opening match for the regional four-day championship against the Jamaica Scorpions. Today, the 30-year-old replaces leg spinner Imran Khan, who oversaw Red Force's Super 50 Cup campaign last November, but has been sidelined with injury for the opening round. Chief Selector Tony Gray said Bravo was an ideal choice to fill the leadership role. And that's it for the news on PBCJ. Thanks so much for watching.